Holding on, despite it all. Does your vengeance weigh more than your family? Spit it out now, his relic! My king. I'm sorry for my lateness. I turned to them, but none offered help. My lady, forget it. I implore you to show mercy and spare my son. He is the last of the Yaksha's bloodline in the West. With an origin most tragic and twisted. Now, he poses a threat no more. Should you grant him mercy, I, Rakshasi, and the Balking shall retreat ourselves to secluded meditation. Along with our children, we will never leave the mountain again. He is our son. We will bear his punishment. If it pleases you, my plantain fan is also yours to take. Flames have paved my way. Through flames, I shan't stray. Vain was my flame, for revenge destined to stray. Let 
delight lies in our submission, kneeling and begging. You've atoned through deeds, Black Bear. Take this pair of eyes. You've served the righteous cause, Yellow Rat. These ears are yours. Your power has gathered anew, Yellow Rat. Keep this nose. You've endured hardships, and I go with the town. And the bull, it is the hardest to turn against a sworn brother. You can have his body. drink from the river of childbearing, to bear that boy in my womb. If not for that monkey, we could have lived our separate lives in peace. As if none of this had happened. You're cute. You knew who I was from the start. Why did you choose to be their lapdog? I never wanted to sever our ties. If kinship means anything to you, give me that relic. And let me avenge my people. My king. Let them 
Monkey have my fan, and there will be no trouble. <gasps> Your brother, I've disciplined. Your boy, I've given away. Your wife's fan. Today, I'll take it with me too. Find a master and serve the right. It's the only path left for the likes of us. Don't you understand, brother? <laughs> Wukong! I took out the bull's concubine with a whack of my rake too! <laughs> <laughs> Turned out, oh, she was a fox squire! <laughs> Yakshas are the mightiest of the Eight Legions, after all. Be your body hard as metal, meeting death in scores is inevitable. Yet, why did you endure the fish and those carts just as poorly? <laughs> you rush like wind with a clouded mind. It's your desires that shape what you see. Had your mind been less unsettled, would you still have fallen for that child's play? Haste oft blinds while patience illumines. Next time, can you still fulfill as Wukong without budget? Subdue the Bull King, the Jade Emperor issued an edict. Nerja, with the incinerating wheels, the Gwai slaying sword, and the coiling tether, and his father with the sealing pagoda and the revealing glass. Combining their strengths, they mustered a host of immortals who fought the Bull King and narrowly defeated him.
Amid Wukong's rampage through the court, he toppled Lord Lao's pill furnace. A few bricks bearing remnant flames fell here and became the Flaming Mountains. Lord Lao blamed the furnace-tending boy for his negligence and banished him to become the keeper of this place. Before the journey, Wukong lived free and easy. He wandered the lands and befriended the mighty. He had six sworn brothers, the Bull King among them. The monkey and the bull both called themselves great sages. They were two of a kind. As for their parting of ways and hard-fought strife, those are tales for another time. As the Bull King collapsed, he cast a glance behind, as if catching a glimpse of his deepest fear. The Red Boy coming to claim his life with the five elemental carts and the Valiant Six. He wished this day would never come, yet also longed for its swift arrival. That was Princess Fairfox of Mount Chile. Graced with great wealth, the princess revered the Bull King's immense power. She gladly wed him, despite the ill-suited match. The two shared some joyous days together. Until the monk and his disciples came, and Pagia slew the princess. Stories tell that the two bore a daughter, though her fate is unknown.